After our graphing calculator activity, we are now looking at lesson 5.3. I have listed the four main standards, and I've also put down the I can statements that you should be able to do at the end of this lesson. So make sure you take a little time and read through these I can statements. If you need to pause the video, please make sure you do so to take a look at these. In lesson 5.3, we're going to work with the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. Your objective is to be able to write a linear equation in slope-intercept form and to graph it. You'll also be asked to model the situation in the context situation. Here is one that by the end of the lesson we should have no problem doing. The Minnesota Vikings running back, Adrian Peterson, makes $2.4 million a year to play football. When he signed his most recent contract, he received a $500,000 signing bonus. We're going to be asked to write an equation to make a graph of this situation. As we go through the lesson, keep this in mind. This is our final objective we want to look at. Other real-world examples, as you might see a situation like this, where bamboo is growing, times of day, and the height of feet. This one looks like it starts out at, if we are looking at that, exactly at 20 feet in height. And it is growing in 10 days. It looks like it's 30 feet. In 20 days, it's at 40 feet. So we want to think, be thinking, what is our y-intercept and slope in these real-world situations? How can we write an equation and a graph? You may want to pause the video and add this into your notes. This is on page um, 5 and 6 of your notes. So as you look at those, what is a family function? It's a group of functions that has a similar characteristic. I gave you an example of quadratics add to your notes, linear, a line, and cubic, which is that snake look. Remember the cubic when we did something like this. Parent functions are the simplest function of a family. y equals x, x squared, y equals x cubed. We've also thought of our absolute value, y equals x. The linear parent function is the simplest function within the linear family. y equals x, or from last chapter, function notation, f of x. Linear equations, we have a model for our linear equations. What you will always notice is that when it's linear, your x is always to the first power. So a linear equation, anytime we are looking at our variable, x is to the first power. Different than being the x to a power or x squared or x cubed. Those will not be linear equations. Again, the definition for y-intercept, this should be on your second page of the notes. It is the point where the graph cross, crosses the y-intercept. When you look at the y-intercept, the x will always be 0, and the y-point will be a number, and that number is where it crosses. Super key concept. You'll notice I have this asterisk in your notes. y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. We want to look at these three equations. We're going to do the first one. I'll be looking at two and three tomorrow in your notes. It asks you, what is the slope and y-intercept? You will simply in your homework tonight be telling you, slope equals three. Or you could put three over one. Y-intercept is equal to, in this case, the number that's by itself, four. Or again, you could tell me an ordered pair, zero, four. As you look at the next one, what is our slope? You gotta be careful for the sign. So when you're looking at these, make sure you look at your signs. Remember, slope is the coefficient of x. So when we think about our slope, and sometimes we'll just put m, it equals a negative one third. When I look at my y-intercept, or b, in this case it's a negative two, or again, I could write it as an order pair, zero, negative two. Before you can do this one, you must rewrite the equation so that it is in the form y equals. Try that one, and we'll look at it tomorrow in class. Key thing when you're writing a linear equation, what two letters do you must have when you write it? As we look at our linear equation, you must always have in the linear equation the x and the y. You will be substituting in the numbers in place of the, oops, the number in place of the coefficient of x and the n b. 
So you must always have a slope and a y-intercept. What if you're given this situation and it says, write an equation for a line with the slope negative 4 fifths, y-intercept 7. First thing, remember you are starting y equals blank x plus a number. We put our slope in, negative 4 fifths. We put our y-intercept in, 7. You're done. Try this one. Slope is 3 over 2, y-intercept is negative 1. I should see that filled in in your notes in that box. What if we have given the slope and the y-intercept this way? Can we write an equation? Remember, the key thing we need is we must have a slope and y-intercept. y equals 2x plus 9. Replacing the m, replacing the b. Please try number two in your notes so that we can have that one completed also. Now on the next page, it says write an equation of slope-intercept form for the line shown. Key thing, what do we need for any linear equation? We need a slope and we need the y-intercept. Can we tell the slope from this graph? Well, one of the nice things is, is this point right here is our y-intercept. So when we look at this, our y-intercept is equal to positive 2. Can we tell the slope? Well, let's kind of make a guess at what we know about slope. Slope is the rise over the run. And if we look at these points, it looks like as our slope goes to down 1, we are going over 1. So our slope looks to be negative 1. So our educated guess of our equation would be y equals negative 1x plus 2. Oh, some of you aren't too sure if you did it right. How can we check and be sure? You're going to pick these two points, 0, 2, and 1, 1, and they must make it true. If I plug in 0, 2, that means, remember, x, y, x, y. If I'm looking at this, it means I should be able to substitute in. Is 2 equal to negative 1 times 0 plus 2? Yes. How about the second point? Is 1 equal to negative 1 times 1 plus 2? This gives us negative 1 plus 2, and yes, it checked also. That's how you can always check to make sure. So if you need to pause that, make sure you write that into your notes. It is now your turn. You want to try and write the equation, slope-intercept form, for each of these lines. Remember, you must first identify your y-intercept. That's your start point where it crosses the y-axis, and then your slope. Try these two. We're going to look at these in class. Think back to what we just did with our horizontal lines if you need to look at your notes. Keep in mind as you do the problem, two things. What are they that you always have to have? What do you always have to have? Those two things that you must always have when we write the equation are slope and y-intercept. So anytime we are looking at we need to find a slope and we need a y-intercept to write our linear equation. In this problem, as we look at it, you are asked to write the equation given two points. We do not want to graph these two points, so what do you do? Calculate the slope. How? y minus y over x minus x. In this case, I'm going to take my 12 minus 9 divided by 5 minus 2. 12 minus 9, as I do the subtraction, would give me 4. Actually, not 4, but it should be 3. 5 minus 2 is also 3. Our slope is 1 over 1, or we can say a slope of 1. We now want to create an equation to find b. Start with the general form, y equals mx plus b. Choose one of your two points. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose the first one. Remember, x, y. So y is 9. m, we just found, was 1. And our b, or x, was 2. And I'm solving for b. Remember, this is my y. This is my x, this is m. 9 equals 2 plus b. And this is where a lot of you will make mistakes because you'll put it down 11. 
Remember, you must subtract 2. So do we have everything in your head sometimes? So if you get mixed up, B equals 7. Do we have the two things we need? Y equals 1X plus 7. That is the answer for our equation. We're going to try two more. I'll do one more with you. You're going to try number two in your notes, and number three should be done so that we can check them in class. Again, first step, number one, we must find the slope. M equals y minus y over x minus x. Six minus three divided by four minus two. We're going to have three over two for our slope. We are now going to go to our equation, y equals mx plus b. Again, decide which point you want to use. I'm going to use the first one. 3 equals, my next point is, my slope is 3 over 2 times x, which is 2. I might want to write that as 2 over 1 plus b. Why do I want to write it as 2 over 1? 2 over 2 is the same as 1. And 3 now equals 3 plus b. How do I get b by itself? b is not equal to 6, but 0. My equation is y equals 3 over 2x. Do I have to put the plus 0? No. I could write it in, but I could leave it at this point. Does it check? Remember, you can always check if you got it right. Plug in the other point. So if I'm plugging in the other point, the question is, is 6? Is 6 equal to 3 over 2 times x of 4? So if we are looking at this, does it work? Well, 2 goes into 4 twice, and 3 times 2 is 6, and it checks that it works for the other point. We pause the video and do the next. Our second objective is to be able to graph the linear equation in slope-intercept form. The key thing is we need to mark where our y-intercept is. Our y-intercept here is negative 3. That means we are going to place a point at 0, negative 3. That's called our start point. After that, we are going to use our slope. Well, in this case, our slope, m, is equal to 2 over 1. We always want to write slope as a fraction. Positive 2 over 1, put a point. And it says get a few more to be sure. Positive 2 over 1. Positive 2 over 1. Could I also go down 2 and back 1? I could. I now have a linear equation for y equals 2x minus 3. Can you do it? First thing I always want you to think about, what is our y-intercept? B in this case, 0, negative 4. Slope? negative 3 over 2. Remember, a negative slope has to go down to the right. This equation, what is our b? Our b is going to be 0, 0. There is no number plus back here, plus 0. What is our slope? Well, someone says there's no number there either. Well, there is. It's 1. We write it as 1 over 1. To graph number 1, we are going to start at 0, negative 4. I am then going to go down 3, because it's negative 3 over 2. I can't continue to go down 3. I go off my graph. So if I go up 3, then I have to go back 2. And I continue doing that. Up 3, back 2. I now have a linear equation for this line, labeling our y and x axis. In the next one, we want to do the same, starting at 0, 0. We are going to go up 1 and over 1. Our last objective we're going to hit in the next video. So we will talk about this in the second part of this video.